ready for release. Control is ready for release. Control, deck, Hercules is away. Control copies away. Control deck, Hercules is past the transom. Do you want to step? I wasn't getting good reads on the current from the ADCP, so. I can step forward a bit if you want some help. Okay. Control, control deck, tether is all out. This is an audio slate for dive 2017. UTC time is 22.39.58, mark. Welcome to the nav side. Control, right. control deck. We have Atalanta away. Copy, Atalanta away. Yeah. Yeah, the, some of the terrain here has been unreal. Yeah, no, we're about um, okay. all right. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the ship there, Dan. You happy for that? Bridge, bridge, nav, hold position.
Ooh, now you're talking my language. Control deck, all stop at five zero meters, transferring control to the van. Control copies. Dan, you okay if we start some chatter back here? Okay, that's very good. Well, let's welcome everybody to uh, Dive H217. <laughs> and I'll introduce Ala. Hi, I'm Ale. I uh, teach seventh grade science in Eagle Pass, Texas, and I am the science communication fellow. Uh, we have our questions open, um, so go ahead and uh, if you have any questions or anything, ask away uh, comments. Um, we are here to answer them. And uh, Larry, did you, uh, before we go around with introductions, you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing today? Hey, Dan, sure. I'm going to start sure. your little we've, toe uh, here for you. We've just had a uh, personnel transfer over uh, in Kona. 
uh, earlier this morning, and so we're taking our uh, taking advantage of our proximity to Kona to uh, come over to a site that uh, again the Hawaii Embassy Research Lab Hurl had uh, explored uh, a number of years ago. I think it was uh, 2004. I read. And on that dive, they found uh, on a steep slope here uh, a series of uh, outcrops. Here, I'm gonna uh, with, I'm gonna uh, toggle some, you uh, privately. Get off that coral spiel. formations, and we're hoping we can uh, find some of those coral formations, and then have Jonathan do his magic with a full 3D photogrammetry reconstruction of them. We'll do something a little different this time if we find that. If we find a good spot, what we're going to do is put what we call a fiducial, a block of known size, in the image. And so as we move around and try to capture those images, we're going to uh, really get an understanding of the size distribution and this full 3D, 3D reconstruction. So that's the plan. The first stop uh, is going to be at about 970 meters. Uh, so in our world, not that deep, but uh, deep enough. And we're going to work our way up slope and ending up at about 400 meters or so. And uh, from the previous uh, description of the dive, it was uh, basalt outcrops, but it, um, uh, with clumps of coral here and there. And so we're going to hopefully find one of those and, and get some good 3D reconstructions. Yes, Jonathan? Oh. Yes. <laughs> just Absolutely. Say, just say yes. <laughs> Absolutely, Larry. Okay, so that that's the plan for the dive. Right now we're uh, we're just at about 170 meters, so it'll take us 30 30 minutes 30 minutes or so to to get down to the bottom. And uh, once there, we'll uh, we'll start looking to see what we see. Ella, uh, Taylor Ann, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. Um, so it's my job to log all observations of everything that we'll see on our dive today, um, and as well as to help Jonathan with the uh, processing of this data to make 3D models from the, the footage that we get. Um, and Jonathan, if you want to introduce yourself if you're not too busy over there. Yeah, uh, my name is Jonathan Feely. I'm the Ocean Exploration Trust's media producer, so doing all things that you see on YouTube along with my fantastic team, uh, Shore. Um, I was the architect behind the camera system that we are testing today, um, what we is officially called the wide field camera array because of uh, how it operates, but we lovingly describe it as triclops here on the ship because it is three cameras that are arranged to, in this particular dive to collect 3D stereo imagery as well as doing high resolution photogrammetry. And Jonathan, we, we don't have them. Yesterday they were uh, sitting on the porch where we could actually see them, but they're not in that position today, are they? They will be. They're still in the same position as yesterday, but I think that because we're still diving right now, we just haven't pushed them out. Pushed you should them. be able to see them uh, in the feed, and then uh, once I get up the live feed for the cameras themselves, uh, we'll, we'll start broadcasting that out on Satellite 3. Great. And for those who weren't with us yesterday, we had a quite an exciting, uh, exciting day. As we had at uh, one point, about eight, nine hundred meters, we found uh, Atlanta was uh, hung up yep. on some uh, ghost fishing gear, uh, a fishing line, and we got to witness just uh, some remarkable skill from our pilot Dan in terms of uh, pulling a knife out of a out of a sheath. transferring it from one manipulator arm e. to another to put it in the right position. EO production. Maneuvering up to uh, the uh, fishing line and uh, grabbing it with one of the manipulator arm and then cutting it with the other. It really was something to watch all the time, avoiding the real danger, which is entanglement in our own tether. It, uh, that was such an impressive <laughs> just okay. show of, of team teamwork and, and, every, and skill. And I'll tell you what, we were sitting in the lounge and eating popcorn, just like <laughs> on the edge of our seats, <laughs> like perspirating through you know it was it was the whole thing yeah. <laughs> so that was quite quite impressive and and really cool to see everybody working together and staying calm under a pretty stressful situation i guess D dan tells me that this was not his first time having i think to you do could that. tell yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's sad in a sense because there is a real problem with this ghost fishing gear this is fishing gear that's abandoned and and it obviously creates uh hazards to things like us we're, we're not that common but the saddest part is that it continues to fish and so it's capturing fish and the fish aren't 
harvested, they, they just die in the trap and absolutely, and then become the bait for the next. And so it just goes on and on. Yeah, and, that was and, fi and fishes. Uh, I think there was a comment yesterday. Somebody left that said, "Of all the hundreds and thousands yeah. of, of square kilometers that you all explore, you managed to get hung up on the one yeah. piece of line in the area that." <laughs> and the, uh, we had a question in an in interaction today. Me and uh, that me and Manel were doing it, and uh, they asked, "What's the scariest thing that you see out there in the ocean?" And I said, "Trash." Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. Uh, Pete, you want to introduce yourself? on SPL? Looks like he's not on SPL. Yeah, okay. Oh, looks like they might be dealing with something. Did Aaron get an introduction? Yeah? Did I just miss it? Yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, but you have to put, we'll have to push that red button, I think, for you to talk. And you have to put that microphone right up close. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Aaron Mayer. Uh, Larry is my dad. <laughs> he just, just coincidence. Coincidence, yeah. yeah. He graciously invited me to come aboard as a guest. Uh, so uh, I'm a naval officer. I have very limited sea time, so we're going to add three days. 16 years in the Navy with eight yeah. days at sea. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be, I'll be at, you know, <laughs> close to two weeks by the end of this. <laughs> Something any naval officer should be proud of. <laughs> Well, actually, the Office of Naval Research is what's funding this expedition, and we've got um, Kristen, uh, Dr. Kristen Mitchell on board, uh, who is telling all the kids that we interact with about the awesome opportunities they have for internships with the Office of Naval Research, which is really, really cool. Um, paid internships, too. Uh, all, basically, naval bases all over the place, which is really, really cool. Yeah, so, okay, so we toss up ONR a lot. We talk a lot about the Office of Naval Research. What exactly does ONR do, and, and how does that fit in with Nautilus? Uh, okay, I'll, 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 I'll take that one on. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Bob has been funded by them for 51 years, but uh, right. I, I, I'm, I'm not far behind. So, <laughs> so, so the, the Office of Naval Research was started right after the Second World War, and, and I think what happened during the Second World War were Navy, the Navy presence was so important was that uh, the Navy realized that understanding the ocean, understanding the environment, understanding the seafloor is absolutely critical to a military success too. And submarines have to operate under, underwater. Um, surface vessels need to often find submarines and that becomes a very critical um, issue. And those all depend on a knowledge of the oceanography, of the conditions in the water column, um, and the structure of the seafloor. Um, and so realizing that, the Navy uh, set aside uh, a group, or started a group, to really explore what we call basic research. Not, not something that said, you know, we're gonna solve this problem for a particular Navy problem, but we're gonna do basic research to understand the ocean. And that basic research inevitably leads to some very applied results. Um, and that's been going on since, or whatever this is, 60, 70, 70 years now. Um, in some ways, it's beginning, we're getting more and more pressure to be a little more applied. Um, but uh, that idea of the Navy funding this kind of basic research really has been the backbone for many, many new innovations in terms of vehicles like Hercules, in terms of understanding oceanographic phenomena that have really uh, had real impact on how the Navy operates. So that's what the Office of Naval Research is. It's that part of the. That's part of the Navy that's really focused on um, supporting basic research that eventually will lead its way into uh, an application that somebody like Aaron can use. Yeah, it's super cool to kind of see this overlap between the Navy and, and everything else that we're doing as well. Okay, we just had a quiet down the. Yeah. Such excitement in the, uh, Larry just had to use his teacher voice. Yeah. That we, uh, I'm very we, impressed, we, Larry. We, there were so many conversations going on, very loud. <laughs> it was difficult to find what was up and up was what was down. Uh, 
Ollie, do we have folks popping in to join us? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're asking why Jonathan isn't on the watch list. Like, I guess your picture's not showing up on the website? Is that because Jonathan's on every watch? I'm on all the watches. <laughs> yeah, he's I, on all I, the watches. I am the watch. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I, for, for, for this particular cruise, um, because I'm, I'm, uh, having to kind of go through each one of the camera settings, kind of help each one of the dives. This is, again, this is a development, developmental cruise. So um, all of the controls, we're refining them every day on how to use this complex uh, camera system. So between myself and Rachel, our data engineer, uh, that's why we're, neither of us are on a list because we're, we're kind of floating between the different ones. And uh, someone's saying they prefer the fish, but they were extremely impressed by how well the ops handled the entanglement incident. Yeah, that was Same. very impressive. <laughs> that was very impressive. Very impressive. Edge of our seats. That was something, yeah. wasn't it? Ah, thank you for reminding me. I did not zero my tether wraps. Uh, um, but Maddie, you want to introduce yourself? Have to take out two tether wraps. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Madison Dapsovich. I uh, also go by Maddie, if I'm not in trouble. <laughs> um, and I am the communications lead here aboard NA-156. Uh, so my job is to support the SCFs and all of the other communications endeavors, telling our story and, and getting all of the cool work that we do out there. Um, and then when I'm not on watch, I am a science journalist, and I'm based in Montana. So another landlocked state for those of you who are watching from from a state that's not on the ocean, right? <laughs> we don't have to be on the water to explore the water necessarily. But all those mountains were formed under the oh. water some time ago. So. <laughs> right, right, that's true. Looks like, yeah, speaking mm. of which, we had someone who said a while yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah, about an hour and 47 minutes ago from uh, landlocked Independence. Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. The new wide field camera. So this is going to be kind of a cool site that we're diving on, right? It's it's another hurl site. Video, can you iris down just a little bit for me? Um, but we think that there's going to be quite a bit of, of coral diversity here, so it should be kind of exciting to get a bit more into the biology. We had a, a, an exciting couple of days of geology, but... I'm looking forward to seeing some animals. What about you, Ale? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the rocks were really, really cool. Um, but yeah, it would be really cool to see some, some corals and, and communities and things like that. Also that monkfish, we do, we have a <laughs> highlight of the monkfish that we saw. Yeah, if you scroll down just a little bit on the uh, knowledgelive.org, you'll see it right there. It's fascinating. Or a moose fish, as some people call that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me, that's wrong. <laughs> I prefer the moose fish. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's just a mixture of the goose it's and the monk. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's just that's just how my brain works. Sorry. Fish fish. So whoever's going through all those highlights yeah. is going to be like, what is this? And who is Dan this person is that Dan tagged Dan all Dan these rocks? He's manipulation uh, arm yoga right now. He's kind of limbering himself up. And Notice we have an extra knife, I think, this time. We might uh -huh. have three on there. We <laughs> have two extra knives. Two one extra knives? One spit, thrice shy. You know, it's... Uh, hey, uh, you know, it's very cool. For the first time in history, we have uh, three cameras looking at the full view of the manipulator. So Jonathan's stereo cameras can both see the entire manipulator. Uh, Rai's new 180-degree um, view, not to be outdone with uh, <laughs> Jonathan's 180-degree view cameras, is currently um, mounted in a spot where it's not being completely blown out by the light. So that's the one uh, right above me here in, the, right in, in the between middle. the two screens in a little bitty screen. And I can also see the uh, Zeus camera there moving, moving about. So. Hey, uh, Dan, uh, since we're talking about the knives, is there a chance you might be able to tuck that little floaty monkey fist away or? Slim to none, but I can give it a go. Roger. So Jonathan's asking uh, Dan if he can... Oh, uh, yep. Nope, that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's actually... It. Sorry. It's there floaty for a reason. It's been there on all the dives. Um, and it's there, you know... In case you need it. We used it yesterday. Oh, wait, but we'll porch. We'll porch the... That's yeah, why I didn't yeah, see you, it last yeah, time. Yeah, you won't see him once. Oh, okay. That's why there. we porched out, Roger. Right. I can do that now if you wish. Uh, I'd be curious to know. Inquiring minds want to know if I leave the manipulator. Uh, 
where we usually park it, which is right there. And I, uh, let me just run this camera and out Dan, so those, you can those see. those three colors on the arm and the white, that was for color balance? Is that what you're so using So we for? usually have our porch here, and we have a nice, uh, what do you call that thing, a fiducial? That's yeah. Fiducial. Look at that, NA something something. So if I now uh, deploy the sextant cameras. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. And uh, how far <laughs> out, uh -oh. how far out <laughs> can I go? Do you have the down lights on? I do, yeah. Oh, okay. So if I run those all the way out to the extent, so they are on a uh, what's known as our tool tray, which is usually our forward bio box. I actually don't think they, I don't mind having the two manips in these shots because uh, uh, because we can't get around the fact that we are on an ROV, like the lights are too much. So it actually, the manips and the lights on the upper end, they're all good storytelling elements. Yeah, no, it gives, so it gives you so that's the, uh, where you're at. Yeah, exactly. Presence. That's the down lights off there. and uh, Is that mids on too? Yes, sir. Oh, that looks fantastic. Oh, look at it. And what do you got going on in the middle there? Uh, those are the, so each one of, that is the port and the starboard lens, each other's lens, because they're right next to each other and they're 180 degree. You can actually see the lens to the right and the left. All right. So that's a fake, it's a fake out. So, um. I wonder if I can crop an OBS. Where, where do we have, um, where do we have the, um, cinema camera displayed? Uh, cinema camera's right behind those two right now. Okay. They're, they're transparent, and we'll see how it looks. I was just curious uh, how the light pool on those looks, because it was... Uh, well, since we're here, I'm going to... And I only moved two lights, by the way. Oh, yeah, sure. That's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're viewing the quad on feed three, this is uh, Jonathan's twin lens cameras right twin here. Twin lens cameras, and we're just getting this thing set on up. I guess there's not a crop option for... So if I uh, oh well, go ahead. What what were you saying? Oh, I was just gonna uh, uh, see if I can bring it up on a bigger screen here. Uh, uh, that's the. Uh, Ooh, I like yeah, that view. That that's uh, the craft on. I'll turn it off. So that's just uh, to verify. This is uh, our Im infamous bubble camera here, and I think we determined on deck, right, that those are still behind the porch. Roger. Yes. I just can't tell 100%. Like if I look all the way down with the uh, Zeus. Yeah. I, c I can't quite get that angle of the dangle. Are, are that the mids the on too? Correct, the mids are on, but wow. that gives you, so the mids, uh, yeah, it's a much scarier perspective. Traditionally right? are, you know, just on the outside of the porch. I've put them down just a little bit for this. Roger. But if I turn them off, let's see, where are those lights? Yeah, so you can see the reflection in the glass there a little bit. And that's not bad. Yeah, so I could bump them in just, you know, a fraction. Like, uh, oops, wrong button. I hate it when I do that. I can oh. have tragic consequences. Uh, no, that's not a light reflection you're seeing there. I don't know what that is. Maybe it is. I don't know. I would think it would go away when I What we're doing here, we're just playing uh, with the lights and cameras. Jonathan doesn't want any light directly showing on the camera for obvious reasons, like looking into the sun, as I understand it. That's correct. Uh, I turned the uh, I turned the craft off. Try, just try putting big one on. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't, but my hearing. I'm not sure if I like full black or semi-transparent for these more. 
I think I'll just do full black. There we have the uh, Norbit. Uh, Chris is getting all set up for a uh, Norbit survey. Now, are we still doing a Norbit survey on the way down now, or what's what's the plan? No, we're not. Uh, but I am going to collect data as we go. Just, ah, Roger. Just for fun. Just it for never fun. hurts to collect a little extra. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to data. have it on. Free data. I like free data. You always record the water column, right, Larry? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, who knows what we'll see there. I, I, I've gotten in trouble from Norbit water column, though. The data rate is a little high. <laughs> I guess here we have a constraint, but normally I say, well, gee, you know, this, this space is so cheap. We're ready for pulse. Sea time is oh, so yeah. Expensive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All Norbit, all oh, yeah, Triclops, got, all the time. We got the bottom in sight, 200 meters. Uh oh. Okay, yeah. Well, you see now. Now Chris is just showing off. Okay, Chris. <laughs> I mean, he's like, "Hey, do you want to see I why?" Mean, Two hundred meters isn't that far. Like. You want to <laughs> see why sound is such so much a better tool than light? Uh, Chris, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm uh, Chris Krasnowski. I'm a um, what? <laughs> what are I'm you? A, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm here is a navigator and uh, high-resolution mapping specialist. Uh, so yeah, so that's why I'm here, ripping on Jonathan a little bit. We're having yeah. had a little bit of a thing going on about acoustics versus optical. So yeah, you know, well, friendly competition. <laughs> as as his exact words is, oh, I started with photogrammetry too. <laughs> I told you. Oh, uh, I think Rennie was in that conversation too. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, you, you got to understand. This is the a little bit of a competition. Shade, shades being thrown. <laughs> <laughs> well, in when, truth. When, when Chris gives you an acoustic image with the resolution of your uh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, wow. No, it's yeah. true though. When, so oh. one of the one of the amazing things, probably it's still a highlight for me of this entire expedition so far, is is when we were going to the columnar basalt area. Uh, Chris Krasnowski's Norbit and all of the work he's done um, produced this incredible high-resolution map for, for, for multi-beam, a very high-resolution map of that site. Uh, hold on. Sorry. I can't do anything. Well, no worries. What do you want? They're talking in the middle. Oh, that's me just playing around. You're, you're good. I'll, okay. I'll put it back to uh, Atalanta here. And, and uh, yeah. so... Um, just it really showed the power of having both types. So his Norbit created a very high resolution um, map for a multi-beam, which extended out a couple hundred meters beyond anything that would have been have possibly seen uh, to the left and right. Whereas the photogrammetry work we did that day produced that very high, high, high centimeter scale resolution visual image of what we were seeing. So with the corals and the crinoids, corals, the crinoids, the structure of the sand next to the the base of the basalt, um, all that really high levels of detail. I got one for you, Pete. Yesterday we had the perfect example. For later. Of in oh, sorry, I'll jump off this field. Sorry, Jonathan. Go ahead. Going down, we got a several hundred meter wide image of the feature but showed us where the interesting things were, where the outcrops were, where the vertical wall was, so that when we came back up in the photogrammetry mode, yep. we were able to zero right in on all these really cool features. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and we've actually posted some of those models on um, our social media, so at- Yeah, uh, they look incredible. Yeah, on Instagram really and cool. Facebook. Really? I, I haven't seen them. Before. You gotta, yeah. oh, you you gotta you go, follow you gotta. at Nautilus Live. <laughs> <laughs> because Larry, you, you need to get on social media. You're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so some of those photogrammatic uh, imagery is on Instagram, which is really cool to kind of see in real time, yeah. you know, what's happening in the control van and then being able to reference that with, with it, what it's actually producing. Yeah, and Jonathan's been pulling some of it up on, on feed three sometimes, and that looks really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, right now, um, our, our fantastic data team, uh, led currently by Zach, is down in the um, uh, data lab right now and so we'll we'll be processing models in near real time uh, throughout this dive um, and we're really 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 hoping big fingers crossed right Taylor Ann that we are dropping on some beautiful coral diversity yeah I'm excited yeah the report here says that it was <coughs> in 2004 they conducted a coral survey and collected 
quite a few corals, so hopefully we'll see um, hey some different species than we've been seeing so far on these dives. Do you think so what's a, what, can, can you give some more context to, this was an area survey before, correct? Yes. Like by Okeanos or? Uh, so Pisces, so they yeah. did a two oh. sub survey um, with the Pisces uh, four and five, I believe. 2004. Uh, back in 2004 on the, on the same very site. Um, so Rennie pulled up the same exact dive track that they, they had and um, we went according to the bathy that we had, the bathymetry, to pick an interesting uh, track so that we can potentially see larger coral communities than we've seen thus far. That's what's really interesting about this expedition is we were visiting places that have been visited before and we're you know, imaging them in a way that's never been done before. So that's really um, fascinating and it's gonna be really exciting to see and share all the stuff that gets produced from this. And so everybody can kind of experience what it's like to be deep down in the ocean. There's also the interesting contrast that many of the places we are visiting were visited previously through with a submersible. Mm -hmm. And having been in a submersible, you have a very, very limited field of view. So you're really just looking out this little window and you see a little bit. But even with what we're doing now with this wide angle camera and the lighting systems we have, we see so much more all at once. And to be honest, much higher fidelity than <laughs> in our eyes can, can, can High recognize five. through the portal. <laughs> that is. High five. Yeah. High fidelity. <laughs> and this this cruise has been really unique too because I feel that we often, you know, we go on a big mapping leg the year prior, identify sites of interest, and then we conduct ROV dives the year following. And this has been a, a location and a couple of dive sites that, as you said, Ale, have already been explored and we're kind of going in, you know, 10, 15 plus years later to see 20 in some cases to see what's what's maybe changed and what hasn't. Yeah, yeah this, this is, we, we, we had just left this morning were uh, our colleagues from the University of Puerto Rico and that was really their focus was the science of what's changed from the previous dives to now. They're looking at ecosystem evolution and things like that. And so I think we've gotten an invaluable data set for them. They, they went, they left very happy. <laughs> Good. Oh, I miss Travis and Ignacio already. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> no. It was, uh, it was, I was so like, fun. Yeah, I sat down with Travis um, while eating breakfast. I'm like, wait, I want to talk to you some more. <laughs> like, I want to learn about corals and, and everything. He's like, let's do it now. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it is a shame they're not here because they were probably uh, had the most expertise on coral types. No kidding, yeah. yeah. So yeah. We, we'll, we'll see some. And we'll be thinking of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, well, they'll be keeping up online, I'm sure. And if any, uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, make sure that you type them in right there uh, underneath the, it says quad, and then you scroll down a little bit. It, you can send us a message, ask us a question. Hey, uh, back row, we're about to land here. Can we reduce chatter to operational? Sure. Okay. 10-4. Right, we're going to quiet down now and let them focus on hitting the bottom, not too hard. Don't come down anymore just yet, Dan. You got you got a you got a cliff behind you. Yep. I gotta get Ant Atalanta in this view too. I gotta get Atalanta in here too. I never bothered because it's not really useful for mapping, but for ops it sure is. Bridge, bridge, nav, two zero meters, two six zero.
Bridge, bridge, nav, increase speed, 0.5. And I don't know if you caught any of that in the back row there. We had a little uh, moment of pure terror here, but we're all good now. Uh, Atlanta doesn't stop. It just pendulums right where it wants to go. And we had a, uh, we were then within about 10 meters of a solid red wall there. Roger that, five down, thank you. Okay, well, that is a big wall. That was uh, kind of an unusual one. Usually we don't have the ship moving while we're coming down. Uh, in this instance, we did. So we had stopped the ship when we got uh, DBL lock there. But uh, due to the swing back, Atlanta has to swing into yeah. position. So we had a lot of dynamics going on. Stabilized now? All of a sudden. Winch control down five, please. I've got one of my students signing in and saying, hi, hi. <laughs> that was some uh, 
radical terrain there. Yeah, that's something different than we've seen before, certainly. Winch control down five, please. Dan, if you're all comfortable at some point, it wouldn't hurt to get a close up of what that white stuff is. Uh, hold on, let me turn you up here. I barely hear you there. I said if, if, you, if you're comfortable, Ooh. it wouldn't hurt to get a close up of the white uh. stuff. Yeah, Roger that. I'm, uh, the adrenaline is uh, yeah. uh, almost uh, out of the bloodstream now. Okay, still. well, well I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you <laughs> and us want to s settle down. <laughs> Uh, someone online is asking if this is the last expedition that will be live streamed this year. No. Uh, do you know how many more expeditions there are, Maddie? Yeah, so we have um, two more expeditions after this one, uh, which are all listed on the website. Which uh, control the down five, please. Tab, which you can click on. Um, so next up, we have NA 157, which is Hawaii mapping. And uh, the emergency that, should be over for the Jarvis moment. The uh, ship is all stopped, so we're static here, just trying to come back down. And um, both of those are mapping cruises, so if you've heard, if there you won't back be ROV. Hmm. Yeah, get a maybe that's what they're referring to. Yeah. Picture of what this hole is. Yeah, just uh, getting the winch, uh, getting Atlanta back down into. Uh, and uh, we'll get Atalanta swung around now. You can probably come around, let's see. Come around, come around uh, clockwise, please. Yeah. It's really intriguing. Hydrate. Yeah, I don't know what. Jonathan, are you gonna? Sorry, I'm uh, OBS stream. Roger, Didn't gonna, like a setting I did. I'm gonna have, uh, put those this back up there for the background. Oh my God, what's happening? And click on auto heading and uh, thank you sir clockwise should uh, come around and find Hercules there in front of you uh, winch control down five please Uh, video, can we get something else going on over SAT-3? I need to make some adjustments to the image profile. Thank, thank you. Roger that. Uh, should be good for a few minutes here. We're going to look at some uh, white stuff here. Just gonna pull your stereo cameras in there, Jonathan, because I'm gonna uh, come down and get uh, really close to this uh, white stuff here. Okay. All right. Try it I right now. Stopped all of the downloads. Uh, Manal, can you hear me now? Clear this out. Manal. Who am I listening to? Are you uh, going out over SPL? Yes. Yep. That's a lot better. But just uh, talk a little more. I don't know. Talk about what you think the white stuff might be. Well, I'm looking at no, it's I was about to ask that. Same as, <laughs> same as it was. Not right now, Robert. We're right in the middle of cliff action here. Uh, probably on recovery. Or on deck, preferably. On recovery. Anything we do risks. Uh, oh. uh, that's not good. Jonathan, you kept Winch capturing us. down five, please. Negative. Stand by. You're, you're, you're capturing us? Good. <laughs> what is this, that's, Larry? That's the question. That, that, that's, uh, it looks like a 
carbonate maybe or a precipitate of some sort. Hmm. Uh, Chris, can you move us uh, 10 meters east, please? Roger, 10 meters east. Bridge, bridge, nav. Go for 20. Let's live like. Two zero meters, zero nine zero. There it is. Whatever it is, it's really cool looking. Go ahead and reduce speed uh, 0.3. <sighs> Lots and lots of thin layers, and yeah. kind of like an evaporate sort of thing. It's what you see with chips in or anhydrate, stuff like that. You said you thought this could be calcium carbonate? I don't know. It's, it's light. So I, I lean on that side. What exactly is calcium carbonate? What is it? It's <laughs> chalk. Or what is it not? <laughs> it, it, it's oh. chalk. CaCO3. <laughs> CaCO3. Uh, and the ocean, a lot of it comes from the skeletons of, of tiny little plants and animals. That, yeah. that As they it, die, it, it floats down. Their skeletons are made of it. This looks like something precipitated, though, out of, out of uh, the water column. Hmm. You kind of layer by layer, it happens where you have... Yeah, you are. Come uh, tail to tail there. Salt come water, then it so dries up, the and the salt comes out, or other minerals come out. We're not in a position to sample, so we can't just break off a piece and put it in a box because we don't have a box. Of course, we're not. We but Jonathan's about, photography. Thought about putting that starboard box back on. But Jonathan's photography will be so good that we. <laughs> <laughs> that and that sweet, sweet orbit action. It is quite remarkable. Isn't it? Though? Yeah, it's really beautiful. All right, and, but, and if we back off, we see it's a layer. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's not just. So we, we see that. It's in between that there's basalt on either side. Salt here, basalt there, below. You see how it runs along the horizon. What an interesting sort of feature, huh? Okay, Tayloran, I'm going to start photogrammetry. Roger. And I'm going to be recording in HEIF files today and other settings nominal. A viewer is writing in that says it looks like slate. Is slate a form of basalt? No, slate Slate is a, is a metamorphic rock. It comes from very, very fine grains of sediment that have been put under tremendous uh, pressure and temperature to, to turn it into a hard uh, rock. And, and I agree that it has this kind of very flaky yeah, you can come back texture, around. but slate would be dark and, and it, it wouldn't really make sense here. Well, there's a coral, I assume. That's a coral up there. Yeah, it's a coral fan. Uh, I dealer's choice. Can't quite tell if it's a, a Nalapsamia, a hard coral or not. It looks like it is a lot thinner than, than those corals, so it might be something different. It's a sponge down. I think it just shot out of frame, but it was in that lower right. Yeah, I think it was a stalked eupectelid sponge. And if we if we can look off to our left there, where it looks like there's a large amount of uh, white stuff, that looks more much more massive than that. Yeah, that's uh, that's where we're we're getting a close up there. Yeah, to our left. Mm -hmm. But it is uh, significantly uh, thicker. If thicker. You will. Yeah. More cheese on the cheeseburger there. <laughs> Uh, so is that is that the food for today? It's cheeseburger. I do like a cheeseburger. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, is that the pizza and the blue and onion, and now it's the cheeseburger? So. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes cheeseburgers, right? Mm. And so we see something much more massive like that. That that could more likely be a, a carbonate, a carbonate deposit. I'm just going to, uh, because that's what we do. I'm going to get a quick uh, close up of the coral here. For yes. Is our slurp still yeah, on? Yeah, I think we this is a corallid. Slurp? Yeah, somebody has negative. Slurp. Negative. So all of our sampling uh, systems quick, are not on, zoom yeah. on ROV Hercules. Yeah, we've uh, taken all the sampling off just uh, because of all the jewelry, jewelry we've had in the, <laughs> I, can, I can speak, uh, in the various configurations, right? So uh, we've finally settled on a, on a configuration <laughs> where they are uh, you know, not running around with glass in the front of the vehicle. So it's pretty slick now. I can uh, retract the stereo cameras out of the way and the 
cinema camera is safe up top. So uh, we could put some of our other toys back on the vehicle on this configuration. Starboard uh, sample box. Okay, did you get an ID there, Taylor? Yeah, so this is you actually a hemichrallium, uh, similar to those pink uh, fragile corals we were seeing the other day, but this is the white morphology. And I heard uh, we'll get a twofer here. Well, uh, somebody likes sponges and also Larry's uh, <laughs> cheeseburger here continues <laughs> on. <to the> starboard. <laughs> somebody said whale poo? <laughs> Hi, I'm doing photogrammetry, Dan, so you uh, can fly around at will, uh, just being yeah. nice and regular about and, it. And, and as uh, Jonathan says, the faster the better. Can yes. I get, uh, can I get cinema cam full screen on a PC somewhere on this boat? Yeah, I'm trying really hard, man. Uh, OBS keeps crashing for an unknown reason. Well, so. Give me the baby, uh, not the labor. Yeah, here we go. <sighs> This here oh, is a pectelid yeah. sponge, yeah. So it's not a stalked one like I thought earlier. I think on the other side of the rock, it might have been a uh, sacrocalyx stalk sponge. Oh, so we're already seeing some diversity I here. I do like yeah. a sacrocalyx oh. stalk sponge. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, this is a difficult <laughs> shot for Hercules because uh, it still has a brow, unlike uh, many vehicles. So, and it's designed to look down, not under. As that most vehicles, science vehicles are. Is that oh. a squat crab? Oh, what is a that? squat lobster? Oh, we have a crustacean oh. in view. Yeah. And it looks like, what is, is that coral an underneath, kind of? Yeah, I think that's an anemone, those uh, oh, an anemone. tentacles there. I don't have my glasses um, on. The relicanth, I believe. Well, one of my students was asking today when I had an interaction if we had found any lobsters, and here we go. What's he got in his claw there? On NA-153, we had, if anyone's listening from that cruise, every time we saw a squat lobster, which it was a squat lobster-centric cruise, we all had to get up <laughs> and do a squat together. <laughs> uh, video, can you zoom in there for us? This is just because there were that many squat lobsters? Yeah. It's like they were everywhere? Good. That's funny. They were everywhere. Um, I call we that a cheap. laser zoom video, <laughs> so you can see the lasers are still illuminated in the top of the screen there. And a laser zoom is a good zoom for me because I still have some spatial awareness and uh, scientists can still get the lasers at, uh, if you're American, four inches apart there. Gotcha. Thank you. That's a great reference. Uh, what's he got on his... Yeah, is he holding well, something? Yeah, it looks like yeah. he's holding something. I'm not too sure what that is. I have not seen a squat lobster ever hold anything, so... Wind potentially could be growing on it as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna text Paula, see if she can identify this for us. She's a squat lobster queen. One nice thing about our antlers, as I call them, um, I can park them on the cliff, which we're doing now. So Hercules is touching one that's uh, antlers on the cliff to give you that nice steady shot. Okay, you can uh, slowly go wide there. We'll mosey on along the cheeseburger here unless otherwise instructed. No, nope, go ahead. Well, if we would have hit Atlanta, hopefully we would have landed on the cheese here and that would have been <laughs> a soft landing. Do you have a radio button in front of you? So are you listening to the radio? Oh yeah, so if you hold on it, uh, you too can do your job with a mere button press. <laughs> um, uh, I'm all right for now, everything's static and we're getting a nice good shot of uh, Hercules here. Cool uh, shot of her there. Seems to be uh, 
kind of petering out there on this back up here and you have uh, an over you get a good overview there in uh, Atlanta there look to your left just so a little for us <coughs> get that tether out of the shot it seems to go on for the left to the left but it seems to uh, I don't know if it continues on to the right here oh, it, would be, it would be down below Audrey, I'm gonna come back down below and just do a photogrammetry sweep of this little uh, Hercules trap here and I'm gonna turn off my down lights so we're not highlighting all the different water and I need to poke the cameras back out Pretty interesting Alexa, terrain here. Deploy yeah. Stereo cameras. Um, for those of you just joining us, we have just started exploring this area where we expect to see um, some corals. Uh, this area was previously dived upon in uh, 1994, I believe. 2004. Sorry, 2004. I'm okay, going to four with something. I do have the stereo system back up line on uh, EO production. Are you planning to survey this, Jonathan? Uh, that's correct. I'm rolling. Okay. Yeah, if possible, afterwards, I'd like to get a Norbit sweep on. This might be a good uh, collaboration site. Uh, can you take the? I'd be happy to uh, stereo camera streams off. I don't. I don't need those. You don't need the stereo camera at all. No, I would. Uh, well, I don't know if you have them in a little box. Or do you have them overlaid, one on each other right now? Uh, I only actually put one of them on to maximize the amount of space. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, why don't you turn that stream off? You want to turn that stream off? Yeah. Roger, hold on. It looks more like an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and and we're food back analogies. <laughs> oh, speaking of, we have ice cream on Sunday. <laughs> Um, Sunday for Sundays? Uh, the last leg uh, Jason promised it to us on Wednesdays also. What? I mean, he, yeah. <laughs> it, but he, seems he, like, that he, seems like a farce. Um, he hasn't I come through on this leg. Change my mind, Jonathan. Yeah, it's fri what's on Friday? Ice cream Friday, Saturday, and what? Sunday? I think we should get I ice cream my weekend. You can have them both on there. <laughs> okay. I need, I'll add. To get used to, I need to get used to that. Okay. One second. I'm going to add right. the other one then. Roger. That should be kind of our standard, right? So. Yeah, I think so. If they're not in a it, big box, they are very useful. It's very useful for me to see it, so. So, we, we had a basalt flow, we had some carbonate deposition, and then another basalt flow on top, make an ice cream sandwich. Yeah. Somebody's asking if it could Ooh, be a layer of dust sandwich. from a meteor. No, I think, I think it's just this carbonate deposition. We, we have flows, and then the volcanoes stop, and you're in shallow enough water, carbonate deposited. Then another flow comes again. What's okay, that red you're, thing? You're is rolling, that? right? What, what is there? It's a fish. Oh. Is it a fish? It, a snail? it is. It's rolling in uh, photogrammetry mode. Roger. Okay, I'm going to come uh, kind of rapidly back around to follow the... Uh, Would you like top or bottom for these views, Dan? Um, in this case, I think bottom. Okay. But, you know, ROV pilots change their mind. Like <laughs> the rest of you change socks, so... It's called prima donna. Everyone, if you're, <laughs> I like it. I like if it. You're looking for the right term for an ROV pilot. <laughs> what I uh, what I really like is when you had them uh, opaque, so I didn't have that square there. So I just saw the. Uh, I can do that. That was that was. You see how he's. Uh, somebody says it looks like a huge slice of cheesecake with chocolate topping. <laughs> oh, cheesecake. <laughs> Thank you. That's Jonathan sighing. Oh. In frustration. I no, no, no. <laughs> and and so utter there, uh, satisfaction at a beautiful no at a beautiful image. Watch your back in there, damn. All right, I am right, no right, longer right, going right. to mess with SSP or any camera settings. Oh, that is the That bomb. looks oh, nice. Oh. That looks fantastic. Yeah. Are you getting enough coverage to get this kind of little square here? It's rather 
I so Manel has just brought that shot up yeah. to you guys you on feed three. Uh, and you can see Jonathan's twin cameras right there with their wide view. Very well, yeah. So what cool. exactly are we looking at with these? Uh, this is two different image. cameras at oh, the same yeah. time? Yeah, so um, we have two uh, cameras that are currently where the bio box normally is. Um, so kind of front and center inside of Hercules. Um, and these cameras are parallel with each other and as close together as we can get it. And the purpose of that is to have kind of a natural parallax between the two cameras. Um, this enables us to get a little bit more of a rapid 3D view of what the camera is doing um, in near real time. And then it also allows us to um, um, see the entire porch area, as you can see in this viewpoint. So you can actually see the lights of Hercules and to the left and right, you'll be able to see the manipulators as they're coming in and out. Um, for this particular dive where we're focusing in on photogrammetry, each one of those circles is taking a photo every three seconds. Um, and the view that you're looking at um, kind of in the larger frame is uh, looking almost straight down at the object. And the reason for that is that that allows us to really rapidly get three unique viewpoints um, and more rapidly and efficiently create three-dimensional models as we're flying in and around this area. So. Um, that's what we're doing right now. And we do have these two uh, circles kind of in a semi-transparent mode. So you can kind of see behind and it's a little less distracting for the ROV pilot. Courtesy of Prima Donna Dan. <laughs> yes. Can somebody please hit OK. Oh, yeah, that's going to be very <laughs> annoying throughout this whole thing, isn't it? Mm. Prima Donna. I haven't been called that in ages. There we go. That is just awesome, Jonathan, with the... Uh, Isn't that fun? With the, uh, yeah, with the... They look like little ghosts in the <laughs> Halloween theme. <laughs> they do, kind of. Okay, I'm going to come back to the right one more time. And I do think you can get a little closer, Dan. Closer? Did you oh, say closer? Oh, always closer. Oh, and if, go ahead. Oh, Larry, is there I any way that... Just a little bit there, video. Thank you. Um, to know, like, how old these rocks are? It would certainly be a way to know if we could sample them. Yeah. <laughs> um, because if, if indeed the, the skeletons of, of yeah. microorganisms have a a well-established age st stratigraphy, so mm -hmm. people can tell that way. There are isotopic ways to determine the age, too, but no way we can tell from just looking at it yeah. here, uh, except that we know that the island of Hawaii is, is a rather new yeah, feature. Right yeah. Yep. Um, it's the youngest of the volcanoes of, of the islands. Yeah, it's a, a million Lee, or less. Is, you know, uh, so uh. we're talking about just the last million years. Yeah. And that's uh, we we are uh, right outside the Big Island right now. So so the lava flows themselves, I'm sure, and they look you know, to, to to the untrained eye, they look relatively young. These lava flows look look that they haven't had much time to accumulate material on top of them. There is. What do some of the notes say about this location? Yeah, so I actually have the original report from October 16th in 2004 from uh, the pilot, um, Terry Kirby, who I believe still might operate submarines to this day. Oh, wow. uh, I'm not sure he still operates submarines, but he's quite the artist. He's the one who uh, painted all those pictures, and he's, he has oh, a, a, number no of, uh, a number of a number of beautiful pieces of art that, that he created from, from the Pisces dives. All right, shout out. Yeah. What did he have to say about the spot? Um, he mentioned that they did a coral survey here. It was a deep dive to collect corals and transit upslope uh, where they found precious corals um, around at 400 meters. Uh, he mentioned that it was very steep here. Um, and it looks like that's you know some of the features that we're seeing here. Hasn't changed uh, much yeah. <laughs> in that regard. And that there were many corals attached to some basalt outcrops um, on a sandy slope. So 
seems like we're pretty much seeing exactly what he was describing. In well, his we, have, we haven't seen the sandy slope. We, Except we, for the sandy slope. They started much deeper, and we intentionally, uh, because we have a limited amount of time, we skipped the sandy slope part. Okay. And uh, so we, we started at 970 meters as opposed to uh, their dive, which was at 1,200. So we, we skipped that sandy slope part and came right into the, the steeper the steeper part. And what yeah. is the summit of this? Um, 400, mm, I think they came to What's 404 that? meters. Okay. Yes, he did mention at 966 uh, meters they ran into an area no, of large we'll carbonate uh, uh, yeah. blocks. Okay, so, so that's, yeah, that's oh, yeah. just so where yeah. we are. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And large carbonate walls. We, uh, we might do it later when we get it. Uh, Larry, when you determine this transect can be over, we can, um, I'm going to need maybe two minutes to verify focus. Certainly. Um, we're determining it's over when you're happy with the photogrammetry. Okay. So, so you make the call. I, I think we, you know. I really like that this is kind of, we just, heard if you, on, on the Atalanta view, you can see that Hercules just kind of poked into this really cool little nook. Um, and seeing if that, that nook really resolves in the photogrammetry would be quite quite interesting. And uh, and also at the same time, Chris is getting the, the multi-beam, and, the, and yeah. you, you, right. can, you can you, right you can see the multi-beam looking into it. So, so yeah. certainly the... Chris, is this something you'd like to also do a standoff multi-beam of? Uh, I would, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the multi-beam that we're getting in here is going to be really messy because tracking is not great in, Roger. This, in here. Um, I'd say that it, that's up to your discretion then. I have enough for a really interesting photogrammetry model of this uh, white carbonate feature. Okay. So uh, you can do the command for ship. If you could just um, hold and pause right here. Um, let me come around. ROV. Uh, I just want to. Let me come around one yeah, more. Yeah, yeah it would be very cool to see the other side of this. Yeah. Look at that. That is really cool looking. And that view from Atalanta, too, looking down, I mean, Herc is just really in Quite a nook there. remarkable, yeah. yeah. This is the very old man in the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> right. For those of you who know New Hampshire's old man in the mountain. Wow, super cool. Now I'm getting cheesecake vibes from it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what somebody else had said with a uh, chocolate topping. Oh, yeah, I see that. <laughs> Yeah, really. yeah, 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 it's carbonate, yeah, so, so there's a flow, carbonate, and a flow, yeah, it's really, really quite cool. Yeah. So we've got another okay, I'm going to uh, come there. back to my left here to the, uh, watch out for that wall. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to come back to that. Look how thin that flow is, too, uh, the, the flow yeah. that's sitting right on top of the carbonate. If, yeah, if you could just maintain a steady uh, or a standoff distance so I can verify focus on my cameras, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Roger, you want me to uh, stop somewhere for a minute? Is that uh, right? Yep, just stop for just uh, 30 seconds or so. And Roger. How about... Uh, oh, yeah, and we can turn the off the lasers as well. Uh, lasers, lasers, lasers are off. Roger. Tell me when you're good and steady. Uh, Someone's commenting that it looks like a face. Yeah, well, that, that that's, was my impression. That's why I called it the old, the very old man in the mountain. <laughs> a little more wrinkly than the New Hampshire old man in the mountain was. How about right there on the point? The poor New Hampshire that's perfect. old man Thank in the mountain you. fell over, fell off a few years ago. So we're just just off of the coast of the Big Island, which is the youngest of the Hawaiian Islands? Yes, this, okay. is, this is where the active volcanoes are. Okay, and, and okay. The only thing Can you turn really off mids younger for me, sir? is uh, Luihi, yeah. where we'll be going in a couple of days. Okay. And that's not an hmm. island yet. It's still just forming. So that's the newest uh, island forming. You hang, about, hang around a million years, and you'll be able to... All right, I'll check back in a million or so. Maybe get some cheap property <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a, uh, a good distance there, Jonathan? Well, sir, I am uh, about two meters away. This is perfect. Can you remain here? Uh, maybe push some buttons. See what happens. Yeah, Roger. <laughs> Look at the multi-beam view with Herc. Whoa, that's super cool. I don't think that's on our nope. I'm seeing stream some. right now. That's not working. I'm going to have to actually fly it. Seeing Frit. some sort of uh, smudging on the starboard lens there. Oh, Jonathan, that, that fish eye is gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. It really is. For those of you just joining us, we came upon this uh, carbonate formation uh, between uh, some basalt. I'll be done soon, I swear, but... 
and uh, we're looking for some corals. Uh, a dive Coral. in 2004. Corals are passe now. We've got <laughs> much more interesting rocks. We're, we're back in geology. Never now. mind. <laughs> Says the geologist. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Verified. We Verified. are uh, mapping this area and getting some cool images to turn into 3D models. models. Okay, and um, I am a little bit closer to that there, sir. Closer? Oh yeah, you know me. If you're too close, if you're touching, you're too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Snap focus off. Okay, we are good to go, sir. Let's okay. roll. Can I turn my uh, mids back on? Yes, you can. Thank you. Okay, Chris, uh, if Larry's happy. Uh, yep, I'm happy here, so if Chris wants to stand off and... and yeah, let me get uh, some orientation on how I'd like to do this based on what we collected right. here. We're going to uh, we're gonna back off and do a, a good multi-beam pass for Chris there so he can pick up the feature and the, and the Norbit, which will be uh, like flying Minecraft over there. So. <laughs> All right, so we're going to want to... This is oriented north up. Right. So we're gonna want to do like along this way. So what will that? That. So you want me Let's to do go. like zero six zero. Zero six zero. Right. Yeah. There. For those of you watching at home, Manel just pulled up the uh, mapping that we were just talking about. Can you, uh, so what you're seeing there is depth map the to color. The deeper the color, the warmer the color. Hmm. Um, the deeper the seafloor. So the purples and blues are deep. I think deep. Argus is already in a good position. So. The greens, yellow, and oranges are shallow. You can see in that display in the middle Control, the position of Hercules. So the, that little, which, uh, what we've been which, calling Control. old man in the mountain you promontory. You, say who you, are. <laughs> you see Hercules sitting right in front Anybody of that. Out there on the mapped out with the sonar. It gives you a really good idea of scale with Hercules yeah, there. Yeah, incredible. Uh, Hercules uh, is about the size of a mail truck. <laughs> Now the sonar can see a lot, lot further than Jonathan's cameras, so we'll get this overview picture and then have John or Jonathan's high resolution photogrammetry that can then be superimposed. Yeah, did you copy that, Winch? So when we're looking at this um, this bathymetric data, what exact, I mean, how does that work? How is it captured? Is how it sound, it captured? acoustic systems? Yeah, it's a, it's a sonar, so it sends okay. out sound, yeah, a sound pulse. So this one doesn't sound that it send out a single sound pulse, it sounds out sends out several hundred sound pulses in a fan and this fan is uh and oriented up at 20 meters a minute down 20 meters a minute. from hercules so it's like imagine a fan looking down and if, yeah chris has just put up the profile so you can see hercules would be right up at the top on the horizontal line and the fan is seen deep off to the left a, Ooh, a vertical a wall for. straight and then Actually, just a little bit of shallow off to the right side. So huh. that's a, that's yeah, a single get the, uh, winch set of returns okay. from, from the Yeah, I might have you go the other way. We fan of beams on the winch that the sonar day. is putting out. <laughs> so it's almost like echolocation one, like in a way. Kind of sounds like. It's kind of? It, yeah, it's kind of like it's the same yeah. principle that you send okay. sound out and it hits off something, bounces off something, and, and you wait to see how long it takes to come back. You just do this with hundreds Winch of little control. pings Another of sound all at once um, and understand the geometry. The, the, the sonar system is understanding the geometry to put together this picture of what the seafloor looks below and in this case on the side of the sonar system. I think I still got it. Say what? I think I got a turn in that tether. What Mike say we uh, we had to take two counter clock out? We actually have an entire how high are you going to want to be, Chris? Explainer on um, the acoustic systems th aboard Nautilus not, th at, at our website nautiluslive.org. So um, there's a, a bit altitude. more in depth. Yeah. Uh, so like will. this is a uh -huh. good about this um, depth right how here. the systems work and how we and use them aboard the ship. I I'd like to stay out of auto depth if possible. If we can dial this in with a Z bias, 
I can, yeah. Okay, let's do that. It's less important to maintain an exact depth, and I just don't want the, the wobbles from the okay. auto. So I'll have a visual? No, you probably won't. We're going to be farther off. Okay. This is this is the altitude that I want you at, but you're going to have to step off the cliff. Oh, and you want to do it on the left side. That's right. Yeah. Roger. Okay. And Dan, do you have to do okay. some tether maintenance, or so are you uh, okay? We're going to do a quick... Uh, we're going to do a quick uh, fly over here and uh, our Norbit, the good side for Norbit is on the left because it's on the left side of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come over here and get a visual reference of where the uh, ice cream sandwich started. <laughs> and then we're going to turn and uh, come up and uh, do an orbit pass. Um, so we have a question. Uh, what does sound uh, frequency, or how does it, uh, sound frequency affect the marine life? Yeah, so that's, uh. a, that's a really, really good question and an important question. Um, it's something that there's a number of studies going on. We don't think that the frequencies at which these sonars are working, this one in particular, yeah. which is very, very yeah, high frequency, to we don't there. think that it has any effect. Uh, uh, most of the marine life... Quite. Um, really? that we're interacting uh, with yeah, here like don't depend on sound systems. There's much more concern about marine mammals, whales and dolphins that use sonar, use acoustics, they have their own sonar systems to communicate. Um, and though they, there has been a lot of study and these very high frequency sonars are way beyond their hearing ranges. So we know that these sonars don't have impact uh, on marine mammals. And uh, there is some concern uh, about marine life, but we don't really think that it that it uh, has has an impact because most so marine life does not use sound. Go south then, right? Um, That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good question. And we have certain startup oh, protocols, right? So if we're when we're speaking well, to activate. When, when we use the deep water sonar, which is at a Wind lower frequency, up ten, please. Where up there's 10. more concern, but again, our our studies have shown that those frequencies also don't affect uh, marine mammals. But we do start yeah, off in a way good. where we... And uh, so let's step... We're, we start off at a very quiet, send out a little bit of sound. Starboard? So if there's a marine mammal right. in the area, they'll, they'll know that something is going on and then slowly work, work our way up to the full level. Yeah. Uh, come a little faster on that winch. 20 meters a minute when you come up uh, for now. Okay, so now you can see in, in, in full screen We're view there on, uh, feed, on feed three, to uh, that's what the cross section of the sonar looks like. Now Chris has filled the full screen with the, uh, what we call the point cloud. The cross section is showing up in the white dots. That Those are the detections at the bottom. And the kind of this confusing yeah, looking can. point cloud mm -hmm. will eventually all get, get yeah. sorted out into a very clear image of what the seafloor depth is right now. We're looking at every bit of sound that comes back, and there, there has to be some processing that's applied to that later. So uh, I mentioned this yesterday. It's kind of like um, getting a way bigger flashlight and getting a, a view of what uh, our surroundings look like so that we can kind of focus in on where we want to um, get more footage with Jonathan's camera. Nope. Yeah, that's a great comparison. I'm going to come up just a bit more, Chris. Or analogy. Roger. Ollie, what has uh, been your favorite thing about being on the ship so far? Like, what is maybe something that surprised you? You know, you, you maybe had this okay. idea of what uh, it was going to be like to be aboard EV Nautilus, and now you're here. Five, down five. Um, I'm really enjoying the company there. of all the people that I've made friends with. Yeah. Um, and how um, they're, everybody's so friendly and everybody um, is so um, willing to teach um, uh, everybody else about what it is that they do and, and uh, talk about, you know, what their expertise is. And, and um, it's really been awesome to watch everybody uh, work together to solve problems. Um, that's that's um, really fascinating how, um, you know, a, Everybody has something that they can t contribute, that? Um, and especially like kids and yeah, my students, they think branch, that uh, this is something 10, that you know stuff never goes wrong, or you know, um, all these I people the know exactly what they're doing and they're yeah. experts and everything, and so everything always just works out. And that's not true, you know. Um, there are problems that um, the team has to work on and figure out, 
Um, and so they come together and use their problem solving skills and work as a team. And it's been a really um, fascinating to watch and to, to learn from everybody and, and see how they interact and, and kind of help each other out. That's my favorite part so far. I agree. I think we have a pretty supportive team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's also been cool getting to know like um, people personally and how they're artists as well, like Taylor Ann um, was reading about the previous uh, uh, person that dived on, on this site and talking about art and thinking right that, and that reminded me of Taylor uh, Ann because she's an artist too and she loves science. So it's really cool getting to know um, everybody here. Yeah, I've met a lot of people aboard the Nautilus that are scientists and artists. Yeah. And I, you know, so eight, when I was getting my education, five, I thought I was the only one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I had yeah, a really hard time deciding that. between the two because when I was younger, I thought I wanted to make films. Uh, and then I decided to go the route of learning the science uh, and then, you know, but I still have that dream and hope of potentially getting in on the films, which I am kind of learning new skills now uh, with, with Jonathan. No, it's and it's so it's been great. It's, it's a very inter interdisciplinary team where you get to learn a lot of different skills and you actually use them. Yeah. No, uh, that's I what I, I really appreciate point. about OET is they really invest in the people they bring on board. Yeah, they do. Everybody, um, there's always somebody next to somebody else being taught something and it's, it's really, um, cool the way that the the you know the environment the um, is kind of conducive to that not to mention I mean we talk about this a lot and this is evident on our, the nautiluslive.org website as well when you go to like the team profiles and career options um, it takes all different kinds of backgrounds to pull together a successful expedition right I mean we have scientists and communicators and ROV pilots and we have a crew that keeps there, the ship Chris. running um, so it's really okay. cool just to see that. You guys, kind of you guys are done. Yeah, Chris. I'm sorry, I, I I back up just so it starts dragging you around, and then we know that's we're at the end of our tether. <laughs> and then as I come forward, it, you should get some relief there. Normally I would come down a little bit uh, more, but uh, I'm gonna fly right under Atlanta, so it'll just be easier to. I can drag you uh, 20 meters, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, second. Port 10 degrees, Roger. How's that? What's that? Roger. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna auto for. I'm gonna take out auto X Y too. Just have auto heading on. As stable as I can. Roger. I can do it. I can do it. And Chris, how, how much longer do you have to go? Okay, let me know. Let me know when you're done. All right. For those of you at home, we're uh, uh, doing some mapping. So, so to optimize the mapping, yeah. we've come moved away from from the cliff. And that lets the sonar get a much better uh, perspective, a, of a, a, a larger view um, in, in, in the right. gap. So you can see Hercules there on the map on feed three for some scale. And the white, the white line you see represents each ping that's coming in with the hundreds of beams uh, towing off mostly to the left oh, this is great. of Hercules. Uh, getting, that's we're remarkable. We're getting good bottom lock. You're nice and stable. All right. Do a little more turn. Roger. Maybe we can, we can get this edge in here then. Yeah. A little more turn, nice and easy. Yeah, it turns. Uh, I've got the uh, max velocity turned down and uh, auto heading so it turns really slow. And, and the gold color is the most immediate returns and after a few minutes that'll get turned into these cubes. Which, yeah, there we which go. Are, which are... Oh, that call, looks awesome, Dan. We call Yeah, just keep, just keep the turn going. I think this is... Yeah, Look uh, at that sweet really data. Gonna, this is really That's a good really way to nice. do it. 
you can hear the excitement in <laughs> Chris's <laughs> voice. Can I start driving forward a little bit, Dan? Move it forward. Keep the turn and up, it's I for, think. It's for good we reason. Nice and orthogonal to this And cliff. this is the Norbit data that we're looking yes. at right Norbit, now? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's Which is I'm sort of Chris's pride and joy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a sonar system operating at uh, 400 kilohertz. <laughs> And uh, cool. you can see it's, it's painting a picture here now with sound of what the shape of the cliff looks like. Yeah. And we again, when, 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 we, when we looked at it with the camera, we'd see little little bits and pieces, but we never got this big. Look at the incredible big resolution. Once you get kind of out of tether this way, I'm going to have you and back up, and we'll try to shine some light on these sections. When we see right when we right see right these there. dark areas, the places where no sound there. is coming back. Can you look up just a little? That's actually okay. does represent. Uh, okay, we're good. We're good. I just what's in essence an overhang or a cliff yeah. or some, something that is blocking the sound. We call yeah. it occluding the sound. It's like the shadow. So that, yeah, the yeah, shadow so of a flashlight. Shadows, yeah. And so Chris is trying to maneuver the Hercules around to see if he can fill in some of that. I don't know Wait. about you, but he's making me dizzy with it. Yeah, that's well, okay. <laughs> I don't know who's worth, Jonathan or Chris. With it. It's the sound. His mind of goes so to his light speed, so he's <laughs> processing faster than Makes Chris Krisnoski very happy. And so when you see these these cubes, these voxels, the singing are, is back, uh, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Darker the color, cool. purples and blues yeah. are, are deep. The greens are uh, there should be another shallower, shallower yellow shallower than that, and red's the shallowest. Uh, Say again, Dan. So. Uh, Flown way off to the west there, so oh, uh, there's the sharp piece. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is that yep, part. So I want you to yeah. try to back up. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. If back you can up. back up and fill that up, oh, that's really nice. Yeah, totally. So now the the preliminary data, the gold data, has now been turned it, turned into these voxels. This is what they meant by the steep slope, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I'm not sure this is what the submersible saw, but they. they Derek was asking for some good uh, screen recordings too. I think we're doing it for him. What's that? Derek was asking for some good screen recordings. I think we're doing it right now. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd love a screen yeah. recording of this. Uh, does does Linux even have a screen recording? Yeah. There, Linux but, has everything uh, if you're willing to yeah. fuss with it long enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Chris, the other day you made I another map after we you gather this that, data, so. and it was yeah, super yeah, detailed. Yeah, so How did you do heading, that? This heading will be perfect. I think we'll we'll get that occlusion. Just go ahead and back up on top of this ridge. Roger. And just maintain this nice and steady. You may need to go. Heavy? Yeah, just keep this heading. I think this heading is great. Uh, yeah. Very cool. I've come up a little bit now as we're coming up the ridge there. Yeah, I'll put it in this orientation so you can uh, kind of see how you're... hold this altitude so he gets the... Yeah, if otherwise we're looking down at the... Uh, I want to be able to get under the overhangs with the sonar. You want me to come down? Lower? No, no, this is... Yeah, you, you're going to... If you do, you're going to run into the cliff, so just yeah. do this. We'll do, it'll be... We're, you know, you get what you can. One thing you're hearing in yeah, Chris's voice is, right there is there's always the desire of any mapper to Keep fill mapping. all the holes. Yeah, yeah and, and, and I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Huh? I can drop down into it. Yeah, do it. it. Just yeah. nice and easy. Chris, Real easy. Chris, Chris, okay, we're well, we're let me back Chris. up and then I'll come forward and drop down into it. Okay. Chris. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, Roger. All right, Dan, we're gonna we're gonna cancel the forward move. Go ahead and finish this, and then we'll call it and keep right. moving. Roger. I'm, uh, we'll get a couple points on the top of this hill that'll make it for a more complete model. But I'm about out of tether. What is the back row getting impatient? Are they? Yeah. That happens. Wow. Sometimes. sometimes I ignore them and do what we need to yeah. do. Yeah. Well, parent some. <laughs> I can't hear them. So. What's that? Okay, I I got to come down anyways, Chris. So. It's 
Jonathan, how does this um, well, modeling that in, Chris does kind of we come down in co well. correlate with what you're doing? How do the two sort of yeah. overlap and work together? Yeah. yeah, correlate is a fantastic word. So a problem with um, photogrammetry, especially underwater, is um, the larger the model you get, um, the less certainty there is about whether that model truly Rich. represents the Roll objects. Down. Sure. Um, Actually, so photogrammetry is a very precise science um, in terms of being able to really uh, create a very high resolution image that is centimeter to centimeter. However, um, it isn't a very accurate um, over time, over a great deal of space. Yeah, Roger. So um, on that element, uh, it requires a, or actually in, in that element, something like a Norbit, which is happening um, and is also very a very precise tool and a very accurate That's tool. That's the cinema camera looking down now. I it'll actually enable that. us to um, uh, increase the amount, use, right? Cause you're uh, the precision of our uh, model as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. In point. other words, the model will kind of banana yeah, see, out see, sometimes. It'll like start to warp very uh -huh. slightly. And so this model that Chris Krasnowski is, 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 is generating with Norbit um, allows us to get the true uh, topography of this area. So it allows me to help correct our model um, as our model gets larger and larger. As an example, Larry, how, how large uh, of, a, of a breadth do you think that we just scanned uh, with that f initial photogrammetry? Do you oh, I, I would guess that with the photogrammetry. Yeah. Oh, that, that would be on the order of um, 100 meters total. 100 maybe? meters, yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. Guess, yeah. yeah. So, so like 100 meters, there was a lot of complex terrain there. We are kind of going back and forth. I wouldn't necessarily trust that the the total shape of it would be entirely precise. I think okay. you, you can, if you look or here, accurate. You, we started kind of on that where there's the indentation with the photogrammetry, and we yeah. came around. And so it's just a small component of yep. it, and now we have we have the much bigger picture. So I think that that's the critical part. Roger. And then okay, so together, this will really create this immersive uh, experience. Hopefully, down. that I, that I folks can a, use uh, at home or. Yeah. Well. So. What, what we're doing right now with creating the 3D models, anyone can do, and, and, and we could totally fake it and create fantasy. But that, that isn't what we do. The, the product that we want to create is, 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 should be as accurate and indicative of what we are actually saying is possible. So that's where, you know, no, yes, gonna, if uh, we're creating a video do, uh, game or a VR experience, um, we, could, we could totally just make this up, right? We know what the, these mountains look like. I could hire an incredible team of incredible designers to do a great job modeling what could be. But why do that when we know what is? So um, do we require centimeter level precision for photogrammetry for games? No, but the other element is that this style of imaging um, is incredibly useful for documenting uh, the status of areas on a scientific term. Um, Travis, Dr. Please. Travis Courtney, who is just out here from the University of Puerto Rico, um, he's interested in using um, photogrammetry to estimate how uh, how hard substrate actually hosts um, uh, and the volume of biology that is actually attached to that substrate. So that all of these fantastic uh, to, uh, scientific um, uh, are uses uh, by by the scientific community of uh, photogrammetry. So while we're out here, we really do want to uh, do as good a job as possible with all the tools and all the expertise that we have on board to, to make sure that we, we do it right. Because because this area will very, very likely never be seen by by, by a human being ever again. I'm going to zero them there at minus 2.5. So that's why we're that just taking that extra five minutes, yesterday. completing the scan, letting him fill in all of those holes because okay. this could be uh, one of the most indicative data sets of this type of geologic formation that's ever been done. We just never know. So cool. And, and we're also um, really pioneering a, a, a new approach in terms okay. of this combination of, of uh, yeah. high resolution Ready to with um, start the photogrammetry. This thing, huh? it's, uh, it's really an exciting uh, Truly. step forward. And Ollie, do you see sort of a place for this in schools as well? I mean, do you think students would appreciate learning in, in these types of models and environments? 
Yeah, because so many kids think that the ocean floor is flat. Sure. Um, and it's it's really cool to be able to show them stuff like this and, and uh, you know, uh, it's going to give them that visual component to where they understand like, hey, there's all these valleys and there's mountains down there, um, just like there is on land. And, and it's also, um, you know, really important that we explore our ocean um, just as much or even more than we do like uh, planets and things because we know more about Mars and, and our moon or the surface of Mars and our moon than we do of the ocean floor. And uh, it's a really fascinating, right. you know, um, field that that uh, can bring kids into to science and love science and that's I'm all about that I want I'm more little scientists yeah more scientists <laughs> okay. yes uh, everybody everybody should be a scientist no, speaking of if me. anybody did, uh, at home scientists are watching um, be sure to scroll to the bottom of so, the web page I, I was down and send us your questions because we are here that's, that's what just, we're doing we're communicating yeah, we're talking to you we want to know what you want to know um yeah, no, that was Crystal. Anything and everything goes. <laughs> yeah, and if you're watching on YouTube, these. go over to NautilusLive.org and ask us a question. Yeah, maybe. Wouldn't be the first time. Well, that was okay. a heck of a spot to land on. Yeah. That was neat. Nicely done. Oh, it was just good. Just good planning, Chris. I know. I'm, yeah, I, I could just... I had just a good feeling about that Lance, one particular up contour. Five, please, up five. Okay, so we're, we're at about 883 meters now, and we want to move our, move our the tether looks way nice up. Now, yeah. No pigtails in it. You're okay with the tether, Dan? So our expedition leader just texted us all saying to Google okay. keyhole precious coral. Yeah. I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Keyhole. Keyhole. Um, which okay, sounds like it might way. be coming up in this dive. Which yeah, that's in theory. One, three, five, cool. I've got the page yeah, open here. Progress. Okay, well that is definitely something to look forward to yeah. as well. Well, that's what I'm trying to get us to move up. All right. Uh, okay, do you want to track that or do you want to, or do we want to? Go towards the waypoint. And I don't know. It's above my pay grade. What do you think, Larry? Making an observation. Chris, are you speaking to me? Yeah, we have an immediate uphill off to, uh, looks like off to the right of waypoint three. Do you want to head up that, or do you want to just head towards waypoint three? Um, I, I would head uphill and towards waypoint three. <laughs> Wait, sorry, say again. I lost you for a second. I would, I would head uphill and towards waypoint three, if you can. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what we'll do. Right. All right. All right, Dan, so just kind of follow this maybe till the end of your tether, and if you run out, we'll yank back towards waypoint well, three. I didn't hear what he said there. He wants to go. Just roughly Yeah, uphill. I can grab up. Yeah, up, let's yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Just head towards the waypoint. Make yeah, it easy. yeah right. we're just heading towards the waypoint. If anybody at home wants to Google that, it's K-E-A-H-O-L-E, -E, Keyhole Precious Coral Bed. Pretty cool pictures. All right, now we see some seafloor again. Let's get into it. <laughs> You're off, Dan. Oh. <laughs> Taylor, and what's your specialty? Like, what are you studying at when you're back at school? Yeah, so I'm currently a master's student at Cal State Northridge and okay. a research assistant at the University of California, Los Angeles. So I do two different things in both of those places. Um, in my master's program, I'm researching microplastic pollution in the deep sea. I actually collected samples in 2020 on the Nautilus. And I am finalizing the, that data and analyzing it and gonna be defending sometime soon. Um, and at UCLA, I'm a project coordinator um, and also a research assistant. So it's been a new position for me there. Um, I've gotten to take a, crip, a trip to St. Croix, oh, where cool. we're starting to work on a project with Justin Dunavant. Um, and our side is working on the ancient DNA portion of that, that study um, for corals, trying to date some, some ancient corals and see 
uh, yeah, some more information about them and how they were used to build buildings back in the day on St. Croix. Coral to build buildings. Yeah, yeah, okay, they're very strong building materials. There's, there's a church in Honolulu, again? right, that was built out of coral? Oh, I haven't heard of that, really. Yeah, okay. I yeah. can't, oh gosh, I'll have to Google it or, or send it to you. Yeah, it's, it's Don't absolutely beautiful. Don't wait for the beautiful. reply to say, winch yeah. control up five. Yeah, I have any, many interests and I'm still figuring out how I want to spend my It'll career researching. It'll take way researching. too long if we have to <laughs> yeah. lobby down back and forth, so. What are some of the key findings that you've, um, found yeah. <laughs> with microplastics. I'm curious. Honestly, in every single sample that I collected of water, there was a microplastic. Every um, single sample. Wow. And I did do a contamination, like account for contamination sure. um, doing in my counts. And I used a micro FTIR are, machine yes. to confirm yeah, that they actually, so like, actually were plastics and which types. Trying to smell the flowers. Um, so the most common type was uh, polyester uh, so as like well clothing? as rayon. Yeah, okay. yeah from clothing. Um, I didn't get any uh, anything other than fibers for the study that I did. Um, but that be, could be due to just the, the fact that I collected them in, in Niskin samples all the way from 50 meters to 3,800 meters depth. No kidding. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a sad uh, realization, but it, it you know, I've read many papers that have right. mentioned that microplastics are ubiquitous throughout right. all marine systems. What's so that? I mean, another it would make sense that that matches up sure. with that. Right. Even in the Mariana Trench, they found trash. So, so five zero meters. Wow. Larry, would we do we want to try going full photogrammetry all the Looks way up? Like or? We might have something interesting up. It's totally There's up to you. I, if you want to do that, you're okay. Yeah, to do red. I think. Uh, uh, I don't think it was, that there's you, a you have no speed constraints, so the faster we go, the it's all I think, up I think this, that we should do as rapid as possible until we find coral, yeah. so that I can. Uh, um, I'd, uh, I'd like to find a spot that uh, we can discuss no, about so uh, Travis's like priorities for uh, scanning well, something with high coral or sponge diversity on a hard so substrate. Okay, Chris, Chris, Chris and Dan. I'm going to keep it stretched out. We're listening. Yeah. Um, John would like to do a photogrammetry run uh, uphill, running as fast as you're comfortable. This until, is it. Until we find some nice coral site, and then we'll go into a different plan. All right? Yep. He can... Uh, Fill those boots there. So, uh, full speed ahead. Full speed. Uh, point two is our is full speed. All right. <laughs> I'm, I've, got my seat I've got my seatbelt on. <laughs> oh, 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 so fast. Not even 10 meters a minute. If you oh. took 60 seconds to walk from the port side of Nautilus to the starboard side, that's approximately <laughs> the speed that Hercules does up the hill. Or oh. anywhere for that matter. Ba-doom, 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 ba-doom. Hercules can go a lot faster, but uh, the ship and Atalanta and uh, 1,000 meters of cable. Only so much you can do. Mm -hmm. Only so much you can do. Larry, we, we have a question. Uh, could this technology be used on planets or moons in space? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think certainly, Jonathan, the photogrammetry is a, a technique used. It's actually in many ways easier there because uh, to, to use the same technology in oh. space. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Because they don't have the, the, uh, the bothersome yeah, water in there. Yeah. <laughs> so the optics, the optics are actually much simpler. Much simpler. And the other element that makes deep sea photogrammetry so hard or anything underwater is that yeah, sorry, um, you're bringing your own lights you with you. you so you reality capture or uh, any photogrammetry capture and relies and on the composition of a high contrast point and it's called a tie point where the algorithm locks onto something and looks for that same spot in a bunch of other images that are correlated and, and how those spots change in relation to each other is how it estimates um, how much change there is between two images. Yeah, one, I'll, I'll offer a contrasting opinion a little. One of the problems I suspect they have in space doing photogrammetry on Mars or other planets, the moon, is that they can't control the lighting. The, oh, yeah. The, the sun will come and go. And, yeah. And and here, as difficult as it is to provide the lighting, at least 
Jonathan can control what that is. That's Stable, true. Right? Yeah. yeah like that's true. A nice view there. So, uh, but you're gonna have um, to. We have a question about, about the camera, Jonathan. I like questions about cameras. <laughs> um, why are the colors so monochromatic? What kind of camera is being used? Oh, so they just yeah. appear monochromatic because we're looking at monochromatic things right now. Um, you look and actually compare. We've I'll done a pretty good job today first. about matching the light balance between Zeus and the cameras themselves. Uh, if we reach a spot with um, higher uh, coral diversity, hopefully then you'll be able to, to really see the colors pop in both cameras. Um, and but you, can see, you can see when you look at the syntactic foam on her that you, know, yeah. you can see the yellow. Even, Beautiful even yellow, range, yeah. yeah. So this, sure this is just a little bit more about monochromatic is, uh, terrain. Um, but the other thing that I'll offer is that Zeus is a broadcast camera. It's meant to, oh, there's finally a little oh. coral. Um, oh, yay. Life finds a way. <laughs> there he is. Is that a sponge and yeah. coral that we're looking at? Yes, yeah, so oh, we have yeah. some, a sponge, oh, yeah. uh, I believe a eupectelid sponge, a glass sponge, and then we have some Norella coral fans with uh, brittle stars. Common do association. Like that. Yeah, I do assault. like that. That's great. You, Larry. Great spin. Ooh, nice. Go faster. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're uh, photographing. <laughs> 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 Have we started recording photogrammetry? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I did um, probably five five minutes ago. Okay, yeah. thank you. Now uh, we're seeing these little uh, cooling examples that just like we saw in the columnar basalt. Yeah, they kind of fracture. They look kind of geometric there. Oh, I love it. Ooh, more uh, coral. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. More more corals. What's appearing. our depth, Ollie? Our depth is currently 851 meters. Right. And uh, I had some kids asking earlier today during an interaction about temperature, and so we're about 4.92 degrees Celsius right here. Pretty cold. Pretty awesome. Uh, good for another five. Why don't you uh, step west 10 meters there for us, Chris? Step west 10 meters? Yes, please. Okay. West? So we were uh, uh, discussing okay. camera. Or you just uh, want me to hold? Uh, cameras and step west or so just hold? the big west. difference between okay. Zeus and the, the SAT V3 that you're west seeing is meters. that Zeus is meant to be uh, on 24 7 as a broadcast camera. And the cameras that we're using inside of this new wide field camera array, no AKA up, uh, Triclops, those are all really cinema grade cameras. So they're meant to be record internally. Uh, they're meant to, to actually record with a, what's called a flatter Bridget picture profile. That, so it's not quite as contrasty, but that's because that allows you to do more in uh, the post-processing step. So it's another way of just saying, like, uh, the, the view out of these two or the three cameras isn't as sharp or as uh, poppy in terms of color and contrast, but, but that's by design. Um, we're streaming off of a camera that's not really meant to be streamed off of. It's meant to do one thing really well, which is record a, a very high resolution, very low light capable image. But then when you replay that and process that, you'll be able to... Oh, it's it's absolutely yeah. stunning. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. just what we're seeing in real time. What you're seeing in real time. So yeah. this would this like That's also be, better. like, would you be able to turn it into like oh, a 3D movie? Out. Because, you know, you're using these twin lenses and when you take off your 3D glasses uh, in the movie theater, you kind of see, like, get have like double vision. Uh, yeah. And so is that something that can also be done with, with this footage? Absolutely. And it's going to be, at, I hope it will be an incredible experience for people to see um, creating this beautiful immersive uh, imagery with this style of camera um, has been something that we've been working very hard on for the last year. This is this is one of the most capable deep sea systems um, on planet Earth right now for collecting the resolution and the, the, that type of video, which is very, very specialized to be able to have two cameras that are completely identical that we can put in this kind of stereo view that excel so much at recording in low light. Um, so, so Jonathan, yeah. when you say you have a deep sea system like this and with these very specialized cameras, are the manufacturer of the cameras the ones who make it a deep, into a deep sea system or is it a two-step process? You have a, a camera that's used for any kind of application 
and then spend a lot of time and effort finding a pressure housing oh yeah and the optics for it from a third party how, how does that work yeah it's it's the latter for sure you start off the the process by saying well what is the best camera possible for the application and in this instance i we we needed low light uh, we needed to me meet a minimum um, resolution for the type of projection that we're looking for. Um, and I needed a, a, a sensor size that was appropriate for um, this style of imaging, which was a full frame sensor, like a 35 millimeter sensor. And so then you look at the constraint of size. So, you know, that's, that's X number of cameras out on the market. And um, so eventually we, we ended up on this small box uh, camera that we're know, currently uh, using. And it's at that point that we really go to the manufacturer. Uh, in this case, uh, a group called Sextant Corp. Um, they, 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 they designed some incredibly beautiful underwater housing, housings for specifically for deep sea research. Um, and deep sea deep sea imaging. The uh, they milled. They took the specifications and kind of the broader design of what we were trying to achieve. They absolutely were critical in, in making the refined adjustments based off the reality of the sizes of the housings, configuration options, and then we designed the housings around the camera. And. Um, that's that's I where I expect a tremendous amount of uh, research okay. going okay. into uh, the nature of the lens of the house. Lenses, yeah. Because yeah. uh, a lot of effort had gone into the lens of the camera, but now you're sticking Chris, something uh, in front of it. I'm you actually, don't want to yeah. destroy all that good work right that here. went into the design of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and the physics behind how water interacts with light, it interacts with the dome like this, are are, are not they're not straightforward. There's a lot of ca ca calculations down to the sub-millimeter level of exactly where the lens needs to be placed in the housing relative to the dome itself in order to get a beautiful, nice, sharp image. Taylor, Ann, uh, we have a question that you can probably answer. Um, there's a viewer that doesn't really know anything about sponges, and they're wondering if you could give uh, some facts about sponges. Yeah, Ooh, sponge so facts. Go. Sponges are fun. I'm not the only one in the room that can answer that question, but I'll start that. Um, yeah, so periphera is the, 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 the taxonomic name for sponges. Um, so if you look along on the deep sea guide and you want to follow along to try to ID these species with us, you can go to the NOAA Benthic Deep Sea uh, Animal for, Identification Guide. Um, but sponges are filter feeders, these, so uh, they will feed through um, just sitting there and filtering the water that's already there in the water column and, and uh, feed on detritus or other forms of food that is falling from uh, higher up Absolutely. in the water column. And so it's a, it's a really beneficial way to feed in this uh, deep sea here because there's not a lot of food availability here, as you can see. Um, so yeah, sponges are really, really good filter feeders. Um, and yeah, I, I'm kind of blanking on right now what else to talk about. <laughs> about sponges. I'll, 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 I'll ask you a question. Yeah. When I think of a sponge, I think about the thing sitting on my sink. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> no, no, but um, there, is they, a, there is a relationship. Yeah, there maybe is. Maybe you want to explain, explain that. Yeah, so definitely uh, there are natural sponges that you can use. So I think most sponges that we t tend to use nowadays are, are not the natural sponge that you find in the deep sea. Um, but shallow water sponges are t tend to be used um, in, in the kitchen. So, yeah, um, they, it is the same type of sponge. There was a whole industry of divers, sponge divers yeah. in, in many countries that would collect these sponges and sell them commercially as loofahs. <laughs> yeah, well, loofahs. right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, and sponges get huge too, right? I mean, oh, yeah, they can. But yeah. now, now the loo a loofah tends to be a lot stiffer than the okay. you know, the the natural sponges I've seen that are used as cleaning sponges are soft, but a loofah oh. tends to be different. Then, yeah. Interesting. I wonder what a loofah is. If anybody knows what a well, loofah is, it probably is. is some kind of sponge. Yeah. Too, <laughs> yeah. A loofah. Not is that a, a loof. <laughs> Is that a grenadier fish? Uh, this ooh, is yeah, yeah, I think not that is. a grenadier, actually. This is another eel like fish. Oh. It could be a cusk yeah. eel. Oh, really? So it's not a, it's not a grenadier. Yeah, so grenadier have more of a, a rounded front body part. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, this looks more like potentially a cutthroat eel. Uh, somebody uh, commented that uh, I bet Dan has seen more seascape in his life than anyone alive. <laughs> Got a large shrimp here, too, crawling along the bottom. Shrimp count. 
<laughs> yeah, should we start that? Here? Yeah, I mean, we're a little late, but better late than never, I suppose. I saw one shrimp in the water column. <laughs> okay, so is that two shrimps? That, I count two. One, one two shrimp, shrimp, two fish, red shrimp, blue shrimp. Blue shrimp. <laughs> oh, yeah, even I see that that's different now. I'm sure we're getting a, the world's highest definition image of a <laughs> eel. Um, Unfortunately, we cannot do photogrammetry on eels because it